Mr. Taru, in this video we're going to do an example that is inspired by something that you may see um, on a early question of a paper one IB exam. It's also just something that ties together the skills that you learned in algebra two and or pre-calculus. It's something that IB likes to do a lot. They like to give you questions that require you to pull from multiple um, skills within your mathematical toolbox at the same time. So we have here Considering the function that f of x is equal to 2x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus x squared plus 4, where x is an element of real numbers, the graph of f is then translated two units to the right to form g of x. Now we want this function g of x, the, the transformed version of function f in the uh, basically expanded form of ax to the fourth plus bx to the third plus cx squared plus dx plus e where a, b, c, d, and e are all elements of integers. So the first thing you should catch on here is this is a question about transformations. I want to take f and just simply move it to the right two units. So to start this question, first off, you need to remember all of the things you know about transformations. Na, 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 na. And here we are. We have that g of x is equal to a plus or minus a times function f, then within x we have, or f, excuse me, within a f of plus or minus b times x minus c, close parentheses, close parentheses, plus d. And there's different textbooks slight, very slightly with how they define all your transformation of functions, but basically we have a plus or minus uh, for the coefficient that is being applied to the function itself from like basically the outside, that's going to possibly introduce a reflection over the x-axis. We have a plus or minus, like think of something like y is equal to the square root of negative 2x. Uh, if you have a negative coefficient of x that's inside your function, that's a reflection over the y-axis. If a is between 0 and 1, then that is going to be some kind of vertical compression at, to some factor. All the points are going to get moved closer to the x-axis. Uh, and think of your amplitude change of your trig functions. If a is greater than one, then you're talking about a vertical stretch. Uh, we have inside the math operation itself, uh, think of this maybe something like the sine of 2x, where the coefficient of x change the, changes the period of the sine function. That's just a horizontal stretch or compression. If b is, between, is greater than one, or excuse me, if b is uh, greater than zero and less than one, we're talking about a horizontal stretch. And if b is greater than one, it's a horizontal compression. If c is within this x minus c pattern of our sort of parent function or standard form of writing transformations, if c is greater than zero, that's a horizontal translation to the right. And see if it's less than zero will be a transformation to the left. Of course, if c is less than zero, this is going to appear as like, say, something like x plus one or x plus two. And d, if you have an addition to the, but usually it's to the end, but if you have a, some kind of addition of a constant outside of your main math function, that's going to be a vertical translation, either up or down. And of course, you remember, our transformations that are occurring inside the math function always seem to work in reverse of those transformations that are outside of the math function. So maybe you needed that, maybe you didn't. You also, however, before I pull this green board away, this question on the IB exams that my kids would be taking as a paper one is only like a five or six point question. So you only have a little bit over five or six minutes to answer the question. Maybe your teacher uh, you know, will give you more time if you're not necessarily in IB. You're just doing this interesting question tying together, well, transformations of functions. And if you want to finish, uh, finish efficient, efficiently, or quickly, you're going to want to use the binomial theorem to finish up the problem because you're going to take some kind of expression based off the fact that we're moving this to the right two units, hence it's going to be the, it's going to be the replacement of f of x minus 2, and raise that to the fourth and third power. That's a lot of distribution property if you were to actually just write out that binomial of x minus 2 to the fourth and third power. No, if you're going to finish this efficiently, you're going to want to go back and recall and use your, bin your tool of the binomial theorem, which says that a plus b to the n power is equal to the summation. That's why I wore this shirt. Where we have sigma starting at r, at, uh, where r starting at 0 and going to n of n over r, the binomial coefficient, 
times a to the n minus r power times b to the r power. Again, that r starts at zero. Your binomial coefficient, it's called, as it's called with uh, the binomial theorem, is really just your n choose r, or a way of calculating the number of combinations in your probability questions. n over r is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. Now, this is a wonderful, wonderful tool and you use it specifically when you're only asked to find one term or a couple of terms maybe of a expansion of a binomial, but especially when you first started learning your binomial theorem, a lot of your questions were actually done with Pascal's triangle, which is what we're going to want to do with this one. We're going to, in essence, use the binomial theorem, but really um, we're going to use Pascal's triangle to sort of replace that binomial coefficient part of that, that sigma notation. So g of x is actually going to be f of x minus 2 because we moved this function f two units to the right to define function g. And of course that's going to be what? It's going to be 2 times x minus 2 to the fourth minus 3 times x minus 2 to the third plus x minus 2 squared plus 4. And if you're just starting to review for IB exams or just going into your, um, your sort of like an advanced if, class, if you will, you might look at this and go, wait a minute, you're starting to realize how much work this is going to take and you're going, this can't possibly be right. But that's because we're hoping that you use those efficiency tools that you learned. Like A plus B to the, you know, when you think about raising it to the n power, to the zero power is just going to be one to the... Uh, first power is going to be 1a plus 1b to the second power is going to be 1a plus 2ab plus 1b squared to the third power it's 1a cubed plus <laughs> 3 because Pascal's triangle you add these um, coefficients together hopefully you know I'm kind of over explaining this I hope but in case anyone needs that so 1a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus 1b cubed. And finally, your coefficients, at least before any kind of simplification from the binomial coefficient, when n is equal to 4, we have 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. Let's get started. So we have 2 times x minus 2 to the fourth power. Okay. Your standard coefficients from Pascal's triangle before any kind of simplification, because we have a b which is negative 2, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Powers of the first term are going to start at 4 and go down, so x to the fourth, x to the third, second, first, and then x to the zero power, which is 1. Negative 2 starting off to a power of 0, which no need to write, no need to write that because it's just 1, and then negative 2 to the first, negative 2 to the second, negative 2 to the third, and then negative 2 to the fourth, and all of these, because of the sigma notation and the binomial theorem, are being added together. Close parentheses. Now minus 3 times x minus 2 to the third standard uh, or initial coefficients from Pascal's triangle 1 3 3 1 first term power of 3 and then going down x to the third second x to the first x to the zero second term its powers start at 0 negative 2 to the first plus negative 2 to the first negative 2 squared, negative 2 to the third power, adding each of those up, plus x minus 2 squared. So we have plus x squared minus 4x minus 4, plus 4, negative 2 squares, positive 4, and then plus 4. So a lot of writing, but going very quickly, as long as we use um, all of our tools that we have available to us. So we're looking at, correctly writing this, x to the fourth, 
2 times x to the 4th. We have negative 2 times 4, so negative 8x cubed. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 6 is 24. Negative 2 cubed is 8, negative 8, times 4 is negative 32. Negative 2 to the 4th is 16, minus 3, x cubed, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, negative 2 squared is 4, times 3 is 12, minus 8, plus x squared minus 4x plus, and then 4 plus 4 is 8. Distributing the 2 and the negative 3. Two lines from being done already as I try and step on my green chalkboard. 2x to the 4th minus 16x cubed plus 48x squared minus 64x plus 32 minus 3x squared. Voice crack, I heard it too, and that's 3x cubed plus 18x squared minus 36, yes, x plus 24 plus x to the 4 squared minus 4x plus 8. And I'm super prone to making small silly mistakes, but if I have not made any, we'll check in a second. We have 2x to the 4th. We've got negative 16, negative 19, so far so good. For our powers of 2, we have 48, 58, 66, 67. Our x to the first term, we have negative 64, negative 94, negative 100, negative 104. All right, we're looking good. I just glanced at my answer uh, that I worked ahead of time. Uh, 32 and, uh-oh, no, I didn't, right here. Negative 32, negative what? Uh, excuse me, positive 32, 52, 56, and positive 64. And that is how you take what, oh, hey, it's just a little transformation problem. Just shift the graph to the right two places. Oh, wait a minute. This is a pile of work? Not really. You got binomial theorem. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go to your homework.